We are Catholic Extension, and we have a story to tell. For the next half hour and throughout this series, we'll share inspiring stories, stories of people who are making a difference in our church. For over 100 years, Catholic Extension has worked to build faith, inspire hope, and ignite change in America's most marginalized communities. Since 1978, Catholic Extension has recognized extraordinary Catholics with our highest honor, the Lumen Christi Award. Catholic Extension puts a spotlight on the extraordinary acts of faith and devotion that take place in our mission dioceses every day. These people and their stories of faith give us the opportunity to see what happens when people of faith are given resources to make a difference. Catholic Extension recently presented the Lumen Christi Award to Father Enrique Herrera, a priest from California's Salinas Valley, who has inspired and transformed an entire community. I've been at this parish for like 40 something years and it's never been this active, this full. There's something going on every night. We must have had like 60 kids in confirmation. Now, I don't even, I can't even count them anymore. The bishop had to come do two masses in one day because there's so many and that all started with them. When I came to this town, I saw the reality, the parents working on the fields with no time to take care of their kids and uh, facing all these challenges of crimes, uh, gang affiliation, drug. Half of the population here are under 18 years old. More than 446 kids did the, co the first communion this past May. That's why I started doing all these activities and programs just to help and support our kids. And I'm working with the school district, the superintendent, the teachers of the schools, the chief of police, and the police department, the city council, and with the mayor. We are working together to face up the challenges because if the majority of the population here are Catholics, to the Catholic Church, we can help them to have uh, good Christians and good citizens. Just like Father Enrique is a perfect example of a mentor, and I want to do that. I want to come back to my community and be a teacher possibly even be a confirmation teacher as well to help people learn about their faith in God and what it is to be a Catholic. He's definitely brought in a whole new set that's definitely reamped the whole program and it's definitely made it more popular and more exciting for the kids. I think Father Enrique uh, has done a lot for this community because he reaches out to the kids. And by reaching out to them, I think that's what's changing Greenfield right now. I've been talking to my kid, now the high school doesn't look like before, he says. And gang members or whatever, it's going down. It's not as bad as before. When he got here, Greenfield was very tough to live in. It's a funny story that the, one of the rectors and principals at, at UCLA, they saw a big number of teenagers from a little town called Greenfield. And he asked, where is Greenfield? Because he saw the energy, the enthusiasm, and the positive energy of this group of kids. He is always encouraging all the parents to participate in the education of their children, um, always motivating the children to come to Mass, and always pursuing that um, goal of wanting to make this community a better place for everyone. I started doing meetings with uh, the pastors, the Christian pastors in the community too. We used to come once a month to have breakfast and to pray together for our community and to look and to see how can we serve uh, from our churches, the community. 
And I think that's what Father Enrique is doing. You know, he gets involved in our community. He gets uh, he gets in the flock. He, he he's a good shepherd. My hope in ten years is to see that all the kids and teenagers will be Catholic people participating fully in the in the life of the parish. That's my hope. That what we are doing now in 10, 12 years, they will be a very active part because the church came very important part in their lives as kids and teenagers. They will be here. And we are doing something now for them, teaching them the Catholic faith. We can be the light of Christ for them. To put our own life of every day close to the values of the gospel. And in that way, we can transform the community, putting the social needs of the people close to the values of the gospel. And if I have a voice as a priest, I would like to be the voice of the voiceless. In 1978, Catholic Extension recognized the first Lumen Christi recipient, Florence Castor. Miss Florence, as she was called, had spent over 30 years extending the church in the face of prejudice, threats, and even violence. Based in King Street, South Carolina, she devoted her life to helping the families of poor African-American farmers and sharecroppers while sharing with them the transformative power of our Catholic faith. In the true spirit of Catholic Extension and the Lumen Christi Award, Miss Florence built a ministry and set a standard of excellence for those who followed her. To this day, in that very place, the legacy and vision of Florence Castor continues to inspire three Felician sisters. The sisters continue to grow the King Street Mission with a multifaceted social outreach program to the area's poor population. The mission provides a safe place for personal and spiritual development and access to necessities for those in need. We made it a pact when we first moved here that that would be our main ministry, that we will be present to people. We will be present to the neighbors. We will be present to the church. We will be there. We will we'll be in those circles of people where we needed to be. In 2012, the sisters were presented with Catholic Extension's Lumen Christi Award for their own accomplishments. In a similar story of decades-long ongoing support, in 1981, Monsignor John Cassidy was recognized by Catholic Extension for evangelizing in poor and isolated communities in rural Georgia. Known as the Trailer Priest, he traveled throughout Georgia with his Queen of the Apostles Motor Chapel trailer. Among the parishes he founded was the African-American Catholic community of Queen of Peace in Lakeland, Georgia which 34 years later would produce another Lumen Christi Award recipient in Father Freddie Angel. This community came to be a testimony of, of unity in the diversity. There were three mission churches, a small church in Adel, Georgia. There was a church in Nashville, St. Mary's, and a church in Lakeland, Queen of Peace, all served by the same pastor. It was a mission territory especially here in the South Georgia, is only 3% are Catholics. This truly is Bible Belt country, and our community is not wealthy. We're more than 50% Latino. We have Filipino members. We have a significant Afro-American community. Father Freddie's been able to put his arms around those folks. Father Freddie joined three small, diverse, and dilapidated rural churches into one community and one flourishing parish, St. Anthony of Padua in Ray City, Georgia. Instead of having these very small uh, places of worship that, f that filled the need when they were built, now we have something that is bigger, that's more noticeable. It will put a stamp on Catholicism and the Catholics in that part of Georgia, and it will be something that they could be proud of. I ask you now to open the doors officially so that we may begin to consecrate this church to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, under the patronage of St. Anthony of Padua. Once we are here together, we are family. It's diverse, but when we come through that door, we're just one. 
one community, one Catholic community. Everybody enjoys everybody, you know. You get to know different people, mm -hmm. different culture. The multicultural aspect, it, I think it shows us how we can expand our faith. It is the mission we have to, to unify, to, to be one with Christ and as Christ is one with the Father. It was really the, the support and the interest of the Catholic Extension Society that made this a reality for us. That encouraged others to do what they were doing, helping us. And they started helping each other and they started seeing the bigger picture and what they could have if they wanted it. I don't know how far back our relationship with Catholic Extension goes, but when I travel around the diocese, um, I can see plaques from the 50s and plaques from the 60s. Catholic Extension has enabled the Diocese of Savannah to really reach uh, so many people and to, to, to establish the church and build the kingdom of God in all parts of, of South Georgia. This is a model of church that is the reality. This is a model of church that we're going to experience in our country over the next 50 years. It is a very joyous moment for this community. The dream is coming true. It has been an awesome journey. The term Lumen Christi is taken from the Easter Vigil Liturgy. The Paschal candle after it has been lit from the Easter fire represents the light of the risen Christ, breaking the power of darkness and multiplying through the faith of all the people of God. In that Easter spirit of rebirth and renewal, Lumen Christi recipient Melva Arbello provides a safe haven for neglected and abused children in a part of the U.S., Puerto Rico, where families and children are turning to the church for help after decades of economic failures, and more recently, the utter devastation of Hurricane Maria. They come with nothing here. They have scars in their hearts. They have uh, dreams in the, in the night that they scare, they cry, and we are their uh, support for them and we start to offer all the services that dignify their persons. We offer nutrition, uh, education, medical pediatrics, psychology, uh, social worker, recreation, and spiritual life. To see the smile in the face of the, ch of the children, that's for me the best. I think we all need to become more educated in terms of Puerto Rico itself. We have approximately 60% of children um, under the age of 16 who live in, under the poverty level. Within the past eight years, the government has closed more than 200 public schools. We have lost benefits from government programs. That is difficult for us because I don't want that the services, children's services affected. And we are working hard, very hard. It is a very difficult situation. They love go to church. And it, it is a special moment for them. I believe that uh, faith in them make a change, a transformation for good. I started like a volunteer in 1999, and uh, I, I like to serve. I like to be with all the children, uh, making transformation in them. But, but for me, it's not a work, it's more than a work. It's a mission that I have to continue. The first persons who, come, who start here was the sister, so I just continue the work. As a Catholic people, to, to understand that 
there are bonds that unite us and that should strengthen our sense of solidarity and charity and diversity, the spirit of mutual respect. I believe in them. I believe in these uh, children. I believe that Puerto Rico has uh, opportunities if we extend the hands to them because they are the future of our island. When we are in peace, I can feel the God here, and I grow in faith here. Catholic Extension's Lumen Christi nominees and recipients include a diverse group of people and ministries caring for children in the poorest areas of our country, including the principal of a school for Native American children in northwestern New Mexico. We service about a 10,000 square mile radius. 90% of the children that attend here are Native American. They come from the Acoma Pueblos and the Laguna Pueblos. Most of them are Catholic. And we continue to serve the children that began in 1629 when the Franciscans first came to the Southwest. And we continue to incorporate the Franciscan spirituality at this school. There's joy at the school. The children are smiling, they're happy, and that's all because of the whole evangelization process happening because it centers around the concept that we are loved by God through and in the incarnation of Jesus. We only started with 12 students here, and now we're at 60 students. The human race has to acknowledge each other. The human race, they're all created equal, and we need to be equal and to try and foster that as, as we go forward. In this world is a difficult world to live in, but we have to try. We have to keep praying. We have to be strong in belief and let the Creator be a part of that. Most of all, we've brought back a sense of Catholic identity, and that was done through Catholic Extension helping me to go through a program called the Catholic Leadership Program at Loyola Marymount University. And here I was able, through that program, bring a sense of spirituality, a sense of Catholic identity, and a sense of mission within the Catholic Church to evangelize and touch the hearts of the children we serve. Native American faith communities have been supported by Catholic Extension throughout its history. Father Panchi Vazquez was a finalist for the Lumen Christi Award in 2017 for his work among the Tohono O'odham Nation. The O'odham were not deported to reservations. This reservation was one of the few that was formed on their aboriginal lands. The people have always been here, and they see their culture, and they see their life, and their, their stories. Uh, their life is here in the desert. Tohono tam tohono means desert. They're a desert people. We have a chapel in Mexico, um, Our Lady Mount Carmel, there's where many people work, are from. They used to freely move back and forth on, in the context of the desert and the reservation. Th that doesn't happen as much, because it's, it almost looks like a military state because of all the uh, border patrol in the midst of the many struggles and the realities that uh, now immigration, the border issues and drug trafficking, and we're ground zero. We have been here at San Salano Mission since 1908, predating the, our province and even the state of Arizona. <laughs> what they call the parish or San Salano Missions, is about the size of Connecticut. We have 40 chapels. Now there are two friar priests. I'm one of them. I'm also the pastor. 85% of the Oatham are Catholic, are baptized. 
So how do you proclaim the gospel and be church and uh, show the love and the care and the respect, which is part of the tradition of the people and also, but also in the, the life of the church? We friars have been here for a hundred years. Uh, I stand in the midst of a community that has been here. I stand in a long line of brothers who've come to serve. Three very special sisters were presented with the Lumen Christi Award in 2014 for their work in helping poor families pull together to build a community center, a medical facility, and a parish in a colonia near McAllen, Texas, at our border with Mexico. This may be on the map as America, the United States, the first world country, but the Rio Grande Valley is definitely not that. We have real mission territory here. We have people living way below the poverty line, struggling in their everyday life. And this is a place that we belong as missionaries. There is a, an emphasis on preferential love for the poor. And so we're, 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 there is a place where there's a need and nobody wants to go. That's where you find the ICM sister. Colonias in, in, in my diocese would be um, families that are settling um, quickly and building their own homes and living them very poor conditions, uh, oftentimes with incomplete uh, roofs and, 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 and floors that are in process of being put in for families that are just arriving from all over Latin America. Many of them are undocumented and yet trying to find a way to establish a life. You come into the, the Proyecto building and you see all these things happening. I mean, there's an area where the children are learning, there's a Head Start program, there's an area for medical needs. It's something that is so uh, unique, but yet it's something that I would never expect anything else from these, these beautiful sisters. The Catholic Church's presence makes them uh, happy, and they go out, reach out, and they form communities. Now we have people in the Proyecto that are talking about uh, having their kids go to college and having their kids expand their horizons and, uh, you know, that, that there is hope. It came to bond and bring families closer to each other and bring God closer to all of us, and I think it's, it, it has made a difference. It was an obvious thing to, to nominate the sisters who, who really have been the glue that has made that community possible. I would pray for the mission of Catholic Extension, that it continues to help other organizations like us to further God's kingdom of love and peace and justice. All we can do is use the words of our Blessed Mother. The Lord has done great things in us. Blessed be his name. The 2017-18 Catholic Extension Lumen Christi Award recognized, celebrated, and provided continued financial support for the accomplishments of Father Enrique Herrera. The son of migrant workers who traveled from Mexico to work the farms of the Salinas Valley in California, Father Enrique has worked with local families, school leaders, and city officials to build opportunities and education programs for young people. This living ministry is a powerful example of the transformative power of faith at work in a community, an inspiration for Catholics everywhere. This procession is a march of faith, and all the groups and communities and families walk together. It's so beautiful to see so many people uh, from different backgrounds, and people who have been here a long time, people who have been here a short time, uh, people that have families elsewhere, but they felt very much welcomed here. You know, they're always opening their doors to others, to new people coming. And it's a great gift that Father Enrique has been here as their pastor because he's opened those doors for the people. Viva Cristo Rey! Viva Nuestra Fe Católica! Viva el Papa! Viva Cristo Rey! When you have a beacon like this, people where they can flock to and believe and entrust 
uh, their faith in someone like Father Enrique that he is guiding them in the right direction. I mean, that is the definition of a beacon. And it, it's his presence, it's the way he carries himself uh, that he makes them believe in what they're saying. He makes me believe in what he's saying. He's a light of Christ by also being a, a, an exemplary priest to, to all of us, to, to be there when the community needs it. He is a leader that everyone follows, that everyone trusts, that if there's anything that we need help with, he's there. That if there's anything that we don't find an answer to, he's there. So he is pretty much our, our pastor. I'm so happy because this is a good opportunity for the community to experience the light of Christ in their own lives, in their families, and for the parents and grandparents to see the kids and our youth growing here in this community with faith, with love, with tradition, with a good sense of uh, the Catholic faith. Padre Enrique, receive the light of Christ, Luz Cristo. Recibe la luz de Cristo. rich tapestry of people who have been Lumen Christi recipients and their inspiring stories reflect the work and the mission of Catholic Extension and our unwavering desire to shine the light of Christ across America. I hope you've been inspired by the people and the places we've shown you today. I pray that these stories will move you to follow the call of our faith, to reach out to those in need, and to share the joy of Christ's love. What an exciting time to be Catholic in our country. Please visit our website or call to join Catholic Extension in our mission of building faith, inspiring hope, and igniting change in mission dioceses across the United States. I look forward to the next time we meet here on Catholic Extension. May God bless you and all whom you love.